Hello and welcome to another Franchise Hockey Manager stream. My name is Adam. I am the Community Manager for Franchise Hockey. With me as always and not pictured on your screen is FHM producer Jeff. Say hi, Jeff. Hey, everybody. And we are back with the good, the bad, the ugly, the Vancouver Canucks 2022-2023 NHL season. Uh, Jeff, the Canucks are... Well, we're better than we were last year, but we're yeah, still not improving. doing anything. Slightly. I didn't say we're on schedule here. The, the main thing is what we, we more or less fixed all the ugly cap and contract situations the Canucks have. We've traded guys away, picked up younger players. Uh, I think gotten a few renewed this year. I don't think we have any outstanding contracts sitting open. Uh, Okay, guy, yeah, Myers and Foot are six and seven defensemen. Kwakin and one of our extra forwards, which maybe we'll sign them, maybe we won't. We'll take a look. Uh, oh, and Max Gilton, who we got as a free agent, or was it waiver? No, it was free agency at the uh, during the offseason. Hasn't been that great in Abbotsford, so don't know if he'll be back. But yeah, we just needed some defensive depth, was our yeah. big thing. I was just looking earlier, I just, and I noticed a couple of interesting things, uh, just flipping through the advanced stats. Uh, what was the other one I wanted? Looking at the uh, goals for per 60 minutes on light, this is the, uh, the, the two goals, the, the, amount, the number of goals the team scores per 60 minutes this player is on the ice so if theoretically if this player was on the ice for the whole game and you know didn't wear out or anything they the team would be getting well Carter Garland's close in case close to four goals a game the surprising one is the second one Tyler Mott I don't think I've had him on, on a usually good line I mean he's basically a third line third slash fourth line defensive forward but he's putting up spectacular numbers this year he's got he's actually got 13 points in 25 games which is ahead of his production from last season so and he's you know, 27, you wouldn't really expect a breakout at this point, but it's happening. Okay, so happy enough with that. And uh, Nico Sturm is the other one who hasn't really been that productive, but he's apparently done pretty well. Uh, I guess his line mates are doing reasonably well while he's on the ice, so I don't really want to think I want to move him up. Uh, the other thing is, uh, surprisingly, Jason Dickinson is actually up to three and a half stars now, passing Bo Horvat. I'm still going to leave Bo Hor gonna leave Horvat on as a second line center. Because he's better offensively than Dickinson, but that's kind of opening up some possibilities. Because I do need a, you know, at least, probably at least one more scoring winger if we're going to do well in the playoffs. So if Dickinson's value is uh, kind of peaking at the moment, that may be somebody we can look at trading uh, come February, March. You know, if everything, if we still hold things together up to that point, and. Uh, they're well, assuming there is somebody half decent on the trading block now. I don't think there's anyone that would, can specifically help us at the moment. Yeah, best winger Max Pacioretty, who's gone for two or three months. That's, I mean, yeah, too old to begin with. I don't, I don't necessarily want a rental. I want somebody I can. It's going to stay for two or three years. Uh, Chris Kreider, who's, I think we. Oh, you had some of those guys, but you traded them all away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Miller, obviously. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think Kreider, I, I think he's a little underrated because we started this game with the first version of the database, and he's, obviously he's had a great season since then. So we'll probably... Uh, so I think if, if you start a game now, you'll get a much better better version of him. And then just drops off of that. Palmieri, Donskoy, no, no, that's... I, I'm, I'm looking at least three and a half stars, probably four. I'd probably have to put a good put a package together for him. So I'm just going to continue from here. I uh, should mention that we had a new update out uh, at the beginning of the week. Uh, yes. Found one or two uh, little issues with it. May wind up doing a hot fix, but not sure exactly when that'll be or what uh, what all it'll entail. Uh, there's a thing with 2D mode right now where it's if you're watching the game in full mode uh, and get to the shootout, it won't show you the shootout. You have to hit, hit sim end and it'll do it in the background. Uh, anything interesting relevant to us? Nope. Keep going. Oh, we got LA tonight. I, I will just mention as we're going here, we are streaming currently live on twitch.tv slash franchise hockey manager, as well as twitch.tv slash OOTP developments, as well as our Steam page. 
And I am watching all three chats, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Yep. And the other thing I noticed in the stats, I think I'm overplaying the backup Di Pietro a little bit too much. Ouch, 6-2 loss to the Kings. Ooh. It looks like Di Pietro, as you said, I was overplaying Di Pietro, and it looks like he had to go in for Demko. Oh, just the so very end of the game. Did the Kings get a late one? Oh, three seconds. Yeah, we shouldn't. Uh, I got. I think we need to disable that goalie switch at the end. That shouldn't happen after that very late goal with three seconds left. I'll make a note to that. To well, maybe contact. he got angry and stormed off the ice. <laughs> yeah, we'll That's say what I that. Like to think. That's what I like to think. Yeah. Just churning uh, out. Well, so, so yeah, so the new update is out. Uh, there's so there's a 2D mode thing, and we just someone somebody pointed out uh, there's something odd happening with the uh, arena locations when you look on the edit screen. I don't know if it's just a display thing because it's fine in the database when I check it in there. So something is it's showing up with the wrong location name for the arena. So don't know if that's an actual issue with it's putting them in the wrong place or if it's just. Uh, visual thing with the edit screen but we'll take a look at that and there's one or two other ones that have been reported that are fairly small fixes so we might be able to sneak them into a quick uh, hot fix if it if we wind up doing one i did sit drysdale out for that one because he was getting a little tired but he can go back in now and also because cal has been playing pretty well when we have given him a chance so don't necessarily mind him getting into a few games. Uh, Kowalkin can continue to sit. Oh, no. Wait, whoa, whoa. What happened to Lamico? He's down to one and a half stars. Was he there to... Uh, I thought he was at least two. Wow. He's... He was two and a half talent, three star potential. You're looking at... Are you looking at Lamico or... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, oh, sorry, Guacan. Okay, hold on, Lamico. Oh, Lamico, I don't know what's gone wrong there. Where is, what line is he playing on? Oh, he's third. I th Oh, maybe I just had him in for uh, Guacan while well, Guacan. Oh, you know, he was one and a half, two stars. Yep. Uh, yeah, we've got, yeah, Giuseppe is better than he is. Is he waiver exempt? Uh, no, he's not, but if he's gone down that far, I'm going to send him down to Abbotsford and we can bring one of the other guys down there who's having a good year up. Uh, let's just see who that is. Uh, Alex Cotton, signed as a 20-year-old uh, free agent out of the WHL, is getting nearly a point per game on defense. Nice. So we don't have a spot for him right now, but uh, I think he'll be going in there. So Zev Garodny... Uh, Giuseppe's not really putting up any points although he did do well and we gave him a look last year but yeah i think zev garodney's the guy we gave him a little bit of a look at the end of last season but he didn't uh i think he only had two or three games so and he's a bit behind Quacken, so he'll be the extra forward yeah i'm gonna go with demko again even though he's a little more tired against the caps and now we're slipping back towards 500 all of a sudden. Washington wins 3-2 because Netsov gets all the points. And it looks like we outshot them, actually. 39-28. So, yeah, just a good game for Samsonov. Stole that for them. Well, if that happens. Although I know Samsonov's a goalie. I never think of the goalie when someone says Samsonov. So what's going wrong with the Jets? It uh, looks like they're right there. Right, right there. Going. They're, not, they're going to be pretty much uh, fighting with the Canucks for draft kick positioning. What, what do you mean what's wrong with the Jets? As we record this, they just beat up Minnesota something fierce tonight. <laughs> I didn't see that. But still, you're only yep, like no. one or two games about 500 now? Six. And, they won 6-3. Uh, what's wrong with the Jets is just inconsistent play. And they're probably not going to make the playoffs. They... Coming up here, they in real life they play forty games in eighty days. So, okay. yeah, it's um, 
Okay. Under underachievement is the biggest thing. That and having guys just hurt very inconsistently. Yeah, sounds like the Canucks. Somebody, somebody gets back, somebody else gets hurt. Somebody gets back, somebody else gets hurt. Deep and they're really against missing, Ottawa, and we lose three to two again. Really missing Nikki Ehlers right now. And this time we outshot Ottawa by nearly two to one. So we're just not getting goals here. We're putting up a lot of shots, but uh, so is that bad luck or is that something else? And we're back to 500 and probably back to having to, I mean, if we're not in a playoff spot close to the trading deadline, we've got to think about building for the next year again. I'm not going to try for the rental like I might have, or well, not a rental, but, you know, the one to two year star left wing and be instead looking for probably potential somebody that can play for Brad Lambert, who was our first rounder. Right. Been watching the Olympics? Uh, when I can. It's, you know, tough when it's opposite hours. I know that works for you, but. Yeah, no, I haven't been watching that much. Just doesn't. Okay, well, Canada's out now, but although we got the women's final in, what, about an hour starting? Yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah I should be, I mean, like literally the only competitive game of the women's tournament. And finally we get a win. I, I don't know about that. It's the mo probably the most competitive, but there's still decent games going on there. Yeah. Well, I mean, most competitive game between two teams that actually have a chance to win the turn, win the final, win the uh, gold. Yes. Uh, Penguins... So the Penguins sign a couple of guys, a couple of veterans, and wind up waving Mike Matheson. Uh, three stars are kind of a con. Oh, that's a big contract for a three star guy and four years of it. And backloaded. Yeah, I think I'm going to pass on that. So what what are you looking for your upgrade to help? Like just defense? No, just the, the D's actually. If you look on the power rankings or the positional uh, rankings, and the teams one, we're actually if you sort by D, the well now the third best defense in the league. So I don't really need to fix anything there, but we need more scoring, and we need those, you know, Thatcher and Demko and Mike DiPietro, one of them to develop into a you know sort of first line. Oh geez. I, I'm sure Demko had a three and a half star potential when he started this. So is he uh, looking less likely to improve now? That's not great news. Trying to um, St. Louis, even though he's a little worn down. And is his stats maybe be enough? I just wonder if his stats are being affected by maybe some poor play. No, I think he may be just hitting the point where he's getting to. He's 27 now, I think. Or the, uh, the game doesn't just doesn't see, scouting doesn't see uh, much more improvement left in him. That's kind of bad news. I mean, we've got two uh, guys who I think are still showing four-star potential in Abbotsford, but they're a ways off, Seelovs and uh, Eliason. Nothing interesting there, I think. Well, James Reimer just uh, got bought out by San Jose, but he's down to one and a half stars. Uh, hmm. So what you're saying is he's probably not the answer. Pretty much. See, the depth of the goalies, we've got Seelaws is one and a half stars, four star potential, because he's putting together a pretty good season uh, in Abbotsford. Well, decent season. Lyason's a little behind him, one star, four stars. So these guys are still at least a season two, maybe even three away. And a line in the extra guy is probably never going to get signed unless he significantly improves in the next couple of years. And Demko is way too tired to start against the wings. Oh, wow, what's wrong with, why is Hoglander 
Now I've got to leave the game to fix that. Hogwander must add a minor injury or something because he's down to 55%. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, jeez, I forgot to switch goalies back. So Demko's going to be exhausted. And we went anyhow, though, 5-3. Wait, what was the shot total there? No, 46-41. I, I saw the six, and I thought it was somebody had 60 shots. But yeah, I think the main thing for the main area we need to improve right now is getting at least one more good scoring guy in the top two lines. And we're okay at center, so probably a winger. Well, I mean, we got some of our centers can play wing as well. So, you know, Patterson can move over so we could get a center too. But I think they'll look for a winger first. Uh, Jack Eichel, just activated by Vegas in real life, has got a 21-game point scoring streak for them. Nice. Yeah, be a, Go ahead. I was going to say, it's going to be interesting to see how he plays, and hopefully he remains healthy. But you have to wonder. I hope he does. Okay, against New Jersey, Di Pietro in to give uh, Demko some rest. And he comes up with a 3 nothing shutout. Only 25 shots, but still. Getting close to Christmas here, and we kind of clawed our way back a few games above 500 into fourth place, fighting with Anaheim for third. Uh, well, wow, look at Tampa. They're somehow in last place in the Atlantic. What happened there? They must have to sell off a bit to get under the cap. Maybe. I don't remember seeing that, though. Take a look at them in a second. So, Jeff, you mentioned earlier, too, that, you know, we have a uh, new update out. What's one of the big new features from the update? Well, we've got a few things. Uh one of the things we've done is let me show you the edit screen if you got commissioner mode on the create player uh, interface has uh, got a bunch of new improvements um, you do a lot more now although there's something going on a little odd with ability and potential we have to take a look at that that's one more thing that, that we may need to hotfix but it used to be I think there was only five or six things you could set we've doubled or tripled that now a lot more to do. Uh, you won't see it in this game. We've also added the uh, new Division 4 for the uh, World Championships. And the biggest thing is probably the ability to change lines. Uh, oh, great. Pedersen's got a minor injury. To change lines when you're playing in 2D mode. So I may do that a little later in this. Just show one game near the end of the stream to... Uh, show how that works so Pedersen huh. actually I think I'm going to leave him in he's at 67% I think that'll be good enough and everybody else is healthy and rested probably should have started Di Pietro again after the shutout but uh, we wound up with a 7-1 win nice and Michael awesome. Rasmussen, who we picked up on waivers, I think, uh, has a couple of points. Even better. And what, there's, what, one other, what else did we do with uh, the update? What am I forgetting? I think there was something important when you're playing the game, Jeff. Well, everything is while you're playing the game. I mean, how can I do anything? That's... Okay, well, while you're while, while you're playing out the game, the line changed. Yes, I mentioned that. Yeah. Did you? Okay. Well, yeah. I'm sorry. My brain is a little bit all over the place right now. Um, okay. Uh, I know you got mad at me in the notes. 
Yeah, that was entirely your fault. Well, anybody who was listening last week heard. <laughs> I, t I tell, or no, wait, no, it was, that was off street, wasn't it? I said, I, yeah, I said I had finished doing yeah, the, the database updating that night or that afternoon. And Adam says, well, now somebody's going to get fired or traded tomorrow. And sure enough, Dave Tippett gone the next day. So that is entirely your fault. I don't think so. Just because it's more like fact that it will always happen. As soon as you say we're done with this for right now, it's immediately going to cause an issue. Okay, I'm just going to do a quick change on the lines. I've got to wait until Pedersen's healthy again. I'll redo that again for good. So then, yeah, I guess that was the other thing. We obviously updated the database and made a few changes. Uh, I went through some of the NHL rookies, the guys that are off to a good start, and bumped them up a little bit. And made a few other changes, and the other researchers have done some, added some new stuff as well. Pedersen's still dated now down to 49%. That's not good. Have I got a center in Abbotsford? Well, that's not looking promising. Uh, boy, Who's ready to is, go? Yeah, our depth is terrible. Yeah. Um, no, I'm just gonna... Oh, well. Uh, Dimitri Zagaret, he can play he's, center. He's the guy I called up already. Oh, sorry. He's the one I... I'm just looking across. Uh, okay, just going to try a game with uh, rough lineups like that. Demko can start again. So I guess maybe that's what you're looking for at the trade deadline. And we somehow beat uh, the Oilers in overtime. So we've got a little bit of a winning uh, streak going here. I mean, if I can get an extra center for Habits for just as a throw in, but I mean, we haven't even got a two star guy down there at, that's a natural center. Okay, well, just just looking on uh, signable guys, maybe not exactly your ch huge choices, but Derek Brassard is available. Still two and a half star stars. Uh, doesn't look like he's in this one. I had to use a magnifying glass and signable. He's playing in a senior league right now. Oh, okay. Not complete free agent. Uh... Yeah. Uh, After that, it's... Pain is out there. That's surprising. Is he... Oh, UF or RFA is holding out from the flames. That's why. I was going to say, I don't see him on this, so... Did I check... Could offer sheet him. No, I don't want to pay that. And uh, Brandon Sutter. Well, looks like signed in uh, the AHL as a free agent. Yeah, playing with Hershey. No, not Hershey. Uh, Henderson. Henderson. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, Brassard was the top guy I left on mine. What would Sutter want, theoretically? Will he take a two-way deal? Offer him 150 to be in the minors. I'm offer him 250. Ooh, big man. Okay, so I will sign him just as a spare part. He signs and he goes to Abbotsford. And watch, somebody will pick him up on waivers. No, apparently not. And Pedersen's back, so he should be relatively healthy now. We've still got Tanner Pearson out, I think. He must be in close. He had a concussion symptoms, but uh, it was saying two to three weeks at the start of this. So don't think he's that. Oh, no, yeah, here we go. Just as I say, we get the news item, and he is. Oh, he's healthy. Perfect. Okay. 
and that gets us 23 forwards. So yeah, we can, or 23 skaters, 23 players. So we can leave it like that. Zach Rodney out and probably uh, is playing the best out of those. Definitely not Kwakanen. Oh, Ramses, Rasmussen's been reasonably productive. And Colson, not bad. So Kowalkin gets to sit for Pearson, but Myers back in for foot. Choices, choices. Hmm. How are you feeling about the Canucks anyways, Jeff, in real life? Uh, it's... Like you were saying, the Jets just too inconsistent. We win one, we lose one. So they're not going to get into the playoffs, but they're also not going to get a lottery. Well, a decent lottery pick at least. They'll probably finish somewhere in you know, like mid-high 80s for points. And our prospect situation, I mean, you can see it even in here, even after working on it for a year. Our system rankings, we are the 30th best team. Well, I mean, it's only been a year or so. Yeah. But if you look at the, our, you know, we've got Lambert as our best, is a top 10 prospect. But after that, our next best guy is Suzdalev, who's ranked 198th. Well, it's not unsurprising. No, so it's going to take another year or two to at least rebuild the system. And against Seattle, who's been hasn't been playing well, but somehow shuts us out three nothing. Grubauer doing a little better in the game than he is in real life. So apparently, Chicago is looking at trading Flurry, eh? Yeah, uh, there was a uh, what is it? Freeman had said that Vegas is shooting down the idea that they would go back with him. Yeah, I mean, well, I guess they're going to stick with Leonard, but uh, I think he'd be a slight improvement for them. And would definitely be useful to have just in case there's an injury. And yeah, uh, the biggest thing is they're just in so much cap compliance issues. That's yeah. I uh, mean, they're kind of half stashing. What's his name? Stone on long term IR. Yeah, because he's hurt. But, he's hurt, but no one really knows. But they said the NHL is trying to check on that. Uh, Max Duquette in the chat says the Canucks are probably the biggest mystery of the NHL this year. I ranked them top three in the Pacific at the beginning of the season, and nothing seems to work for them this yeah. year. I mean, they've they responded reasonably well to Boudreaux. But, you know, everyone I don't, responds well to him at the start, so we'll see how long that uh, I don't think left. third in the Pacific is a bad one. It's more Anaheim surprised and kind of like screwed up everybody in the Pacific. Yeah. It's part of the deal, and then L.A., has been building for this and is finally actually doing something. Yeah, and 6 3 went over the Oilers, and Horvat, who I was wondering about, uh, gets third uh, for a star. And, that and is... let's be honest, who saw Calgary bouncing back as hard as they have? Yeah. that's That's been the big thing. And now he's reuniting the, the LA Kings of 10 years ago. Yeah, that's which a nice deal for, for the Pabs. I mean, they get. A first rounder and a few other things out of a guy that uh, the Canucks didn't bother re-signing last year, and yet played better with Montreal last year. And yeah, scouting report: Bedard, obviously the top pick this year, and we're probably not going to have a shot at him. How many draft picks do we have? Anyhow, we traded for a few, didn't we? They're all late rounder. We got an extra a fifth and a sixth from Arizona and a sixth from San Jose, and no seventh rounder of our own, but. Yeah. Unless we get lucky, that's not going to matter much. Well, you can probably trade one of the fifth and one of the sixth for a fourth. Player pool. Absolutely none of our it. guys gets mentioned. Uh, Connor Hellebuck is the toughest goalie to beat in the league. Some nights, I believe that to be true. And Other nights, others? I think. Okay, Di Pietro going to get a start in here because Dempo is a little bit tired. Against Dallas. Ouch. And Dempo has to come in because we lose 8-3 to three and three goals. Oh, man. 
when did we pull him after the Oh, geez, six goals on 12 shots or 18 shots. No saves. Just a bad goaltending game. That's going to cool him off a little, I bet. And we are into 2023. At least almost. Uh, well, It'll take a little what bit might help the Jets a turnover at the start of this. Uh, because there's a few extra things that you do at the start of the year. What were you going to say? I was going to say what might help the Jets is uh, they are now back to 100% capacity for fans. Yeah, Vancouver too. You just need the need to be immunized and need to be or vaccinated and uh, then wear a mask. So that's everything is gradually getting back to normal here. Uh, nothing so Surprising on the Jersey sales development report. Alex Cotton gets a couple of more points and he's got to be getting close to getting his two and a half stars. So I think he's a decent chance of playing regularly for us next year. And kind of makes me wonder if I need to re-sign uh, those guys I was looking at earlier. And okay, development across most of our prospects. Oh, Garland got a little bit extra. And absolutely no declines. Well, that's good news at least. And the monthly budget settings. It's going to leave the scouting support all the way up. Smart idea. Uh, team morale is relatively cheap. I can, don't need to worry about that. And how's our attendance doing? Yeah, capacity. So actually, I can probably go a little cheaper and save a tiny bit. Don't need to spend money there when we're already selling out. So I guess the Arizona thing is really going to go through. Eh? They're going to play for playing a 5,000 seat arena next year. We shall see. Can't imagine the other owners are too thrilled about that. I don't think the players are super thrilled about it yeah. either. That's that's going to cut down the overall revenues and the share the players get. So this yeah. is already a mess because of COVID. Uh, board confident. Uh, still, I'm still pretty happy, and I will just. Double check. Oh, actually, new nationalities. Anybody interesting? A few Americans getting Canadian nationality. Uh, and vice versa. But Nobody yeah, of the note. Nope. Okay. What was I going to look at? And all the job security. Fans still, eh. Actually went up a little bit because we signed Brandon Sutter. And then immediately, well, he's, he's still close to Vancouver. Just out in the Fraser Valley. Yeah. Yeah. And Not too far away. Job security, everything looks fine there. Hoglander is going to have to come out uh, for Kwakanen. Okay, Jeff, I, I, got, I got a trade here for you. All right. Just just because you were talking about it, and I know you really wanted that seventh round pick. Okay. Seventh round. So okay. You you get a fourth rounder Lost and a seventh seven. rounder from the Islanders. So a fourth and a seventh for a fifth, a sixth, and the rights to twenty five year old centerman Dmitry Zukinov. Mm, not really much of a point though. You said you wanted to get rid of some of those mid picks, so there you go. You change your fifth and sixth into a fourth, and then the seventh is the throw in. For a one star talent centerman who's never going to play on your team. So 
So a which uh, who's fifth fifth rounder and sixth rounder? Mine or Arizona's? Both of yours. My fifth and sixth. No, it's Arizona sixth. My sixth. And I think I'm assigned it's the rights to Zhukanov. Yep. If you start by potential, he's the lowest one on the total pole. For For their seventh. Okay. Yep. Because I know you wanted that seventh round pick. That was was your key thing, right? Well, it's a fun pick. You can spend it on somebody that's got. (laughs) <laughs> no chance of playing but he's like six foot ten or something i don't know about no five chance foot two. just just not a lot of good chance of playing there's been some good seventh round picks over the years yeah claude drew still in philadelphia in this one but apparently looking for trade to possibly colorado real life yeah, or St. Louis, and then I saw St. Louis fans getting all upset about that. Okay, see so if we can bounce back against Montreal, and Demko is way too tired, so Di Pietro in for this. See if we can bounce back from that blowout game. Uh, and just as bad, 7-2 loss, and tired Demko still has to go in to relieve for him. And now we're backsliding, and this is pretty much what the Canucks are doing in real life right now. Win one, lose one. Only we're, we're, well, we're doing it a little differently. We win a couple and then lose a couple. We're down to fifth in division. Tied with the Jets overall, actually, although you guys have like four fewer games. And yep, the Islanders accepted, so I will take that. Trying to check because I couldn't remember. About seventh round picks and that made me think of Sammy Niku, who everyone was saying, oh, look how good he's doing in Montreal. And then three weeks ago, he got waved and sent down to the AHL. <laughs> right. Player wanted to succeed, but just can't find that next gear. Relatively easy to get playing time in Montreal right now, so. Well, that's, that's what they're good. like. Well, look at his numbers. Well, I mean, Winnipeg. They basically said he was was always the first guy off the ice at practice. Okay, and Demko still well, even more tired now. So got to start Di Pietro again. Now, sorry, I have missed that, and maybe even said it. Did you accept that trade offer? Yep, I did. Did I see that? All right. And we lose an overtime in Buffalo. At least it's a point, though, and hopefully Demko is recovered enough to play the next game because we got a back-to-back against Washington. A couple of fourth-rounders actually isn't a bad thing because it wouldn't hurt for... Actually, I guess your goaltending prospects are looking pretty good, but that's not a... Might be able to pick up some defensive help or even maybe a couple centermen the way this is going. I mean, we've got two good goaltending prospects, so I could put one of them in a trade, too. I had a to put a package together for something really good. Okay, now Demko is exa- or now Di Pietro is exhausted. Hoglander still slow. Foot goes back out for Myers again. So you're thinking you're going to trade away Bo, Bo Horvat? Uh, no, probably Dickinson. And Di Pietro is stone cold now. He Went there, got there really quickly after being three stars, and we get shut out by Ilya Samsonov. And we are back to 500 again. And the defending champion Oilers still having another good season, even without Evander Kane. I just shopped Jason Dickinson just for a see what what the offers were. What'd you get? Uh, I got four offers total. That's all. Yeah. That's all. LA offered a third round pick in, in two years. Dallas offered Frederick Gauthier and a seventh rounder mm-hmm. next year. 
Buffalo offered 27-year-old centerman Andrew Ogilvie and a seventh-round pick in the upcoming draft. And Anaheim offered 32-year-old right wing Derek Grant. Basically a whole lot of nothing. Let me let Other me see what I can... Third rounder in a couple of years. That was the best one. What do you think... Uh... Anyway, I'm going to probably wait really until need... we get to the trading deadline. I'm going to see who's going to be who's on the trading block at that point for wingers. And try to put Is that what you're there. looking for, wingers? Yeah. All right, let me just look here. Okay, Hoglander is back. Let's have Garodney done when he's been. He's not doing much. One point in nine games. Uh, quite chat question overkill. Uh, uh, is the new patch live yet? Yep, it was live. The update went out on Monday. So if you've got Steam or other, uh, I guess, Epic Store and Mac Store, they should have auto updated by now, I think. And if you can, if you've got the standalone version, you can get the update from our site. Uh, and we lose to Pittsburgh, and we are really starting to slide now. 19 and 20 for the season. I think i got to shake the lines up a little bit. This is just going nowhere. Oh, I keep forgetting to look. I was going to see what's going wrong with Tampa. I don't see any of the Tampa guys leading the scoring. I wonder if they got injuries. Ovechkin just got hurt for three weeks. Uh, okay, Hedman's missed a little bit of time. But, okay, Vasilyevsky, oh, not having a good season in goal. Well, I guess, uh, you know what, there's another thing we, I don't know if you talked about, Jeff, about the update to the trade engine. I mean, we, oh, we yeah, that's, talked uh, about it a little bit yeah. in our uh, last stream, but so the update also brought a little bit of a change to the trade engine. Yep, it's a little more difficult now to trade for, like, put together a big package of mediocre stuff and get a good player in return. It was already, there were already steps, to, uh, things that made that hard to do, but uh, made it a little harder now. There were a few loopholes that people were figuring out. So now you pretty much, if you want to sign like a trade for a four or five star guy, you've got to have you know, a first rounder, or maybe multiple first rounders, and at least one significant player, or rather not not and or at least one significant player in the deal. Otherwise, the uh, game is just going to say no to your little package of two and a half star guys. Okay, Demko at least is heating up, even if we're struggling. So he's going in against Boston. And loses 5-1. to one. Yeah, okay. For the next game, I'm going to shuffle the lines around. And maybe look at calling somebody up. Although I don't think that's, again, a terrible prospect. Also, there's not like there's much in Abbotsford that uh, we can bring up. Yeah, I might have a trade offer here for you. What is it? I gotta wait to see if it gets accepted. But it's picking up a winger for getting rid of Dickinson. But I'm simming ahead to see if they accept it. It's also giving up one of your goalie prospects. Okay, Foot's not doing as well. Myers is doing reasonably well, and I don't want to sit Lindholm. Rasmussen appears to have slowed down, so I'm going to swap him out for Qualkinen. Going to take all the locks off the lines and see what the AI wants to do. Interesting. And there was also a fix for the Epic Game Store version for FHM 8 as well in the 
update too. Oh yeah, the drag and drop wasn't working properly. We got that fixed. Uh, okay, so it puts Besser uh, putting all of our scoring on the first line. Try it. We'll see how that works out. But... Okay, Jeff, the trade offer was accepted, so it's all about how you feel. Hang on one sec. Let me okay. just see how we do against Anaheim. Starting Di Pietro, and we lose four to three. What was the offer? So I was looking for a winger who would kind of fit with what you want for, and I targeted Drake Batherson off Ottawa. Okay. All right, so he's the centerpiece coming back. You are sending Jason Dickinson, 22-year-old goalie Jesper Eliasson, a third-round pick this year, and t the rights to 22-year-old defenseman Tony Utenen. Not bad. No, Batherson is under contract for quite a few seasons, five seasons still. What's his contract? Uh, his cap hit is just under five million, and his salary is backloaded, I guess, too. But he's a scoring winger. <laughs> Funnily enough, his scouting ability says Batherson and Jason Dickinson are fairly similar in terms uh, of skill. That's going to be a no-go here. He tore his back somehow in the last uh, of couple course of weeks did. and is gone for three or four months. Well, then. <laughs> back to the drag board. Anybody else on Ottawa we could maybe make that trade with? Just thinking out loud here. And against Montreal, can we find... Oh, geez, seven to five loss. Okay, we're in trouble is here. There, is there anybody else worthwhile on Ottawa? See, we're getting production since I changed the lines up, uh, but the goaltending's let us down now. I'll take a look at what the uh, free agent pool looks like for next season, too. We still are still sitting on, I think, uh, around 10 million ish of cap space. Okay, so we're back to the drawing board then. All right. Upcoming free um Kinnon's a free agent. Yeah, this off season so is Pasternak, Barzil. Actually, this is looking like a really strong free agent group. If even a few of these guys don't get resigned, though, JT Miller is a free agent. He's just been doing really well in Anaheim apparently. Yeah, Malkin down there. Not really well. Anderson. Yeah. There's some potential upgrades in goal, but just small ones. Okay, come on. Decent goaltending. Just one game, please. It's Seattle. You can do this. Oh, there we go. Three nothing shutout from Demko. Didn't have to work too hard for it, but still. Now, he should be heating up now, so maybe we can start to fix this. But, you know, GZLA and Anaheim have opened up a pretty good lead. We're going to be in tough to get back to the uh, top four in the division. Mm -hmm. Ch 
challenge. Okay, don't go up to three for his heat rating. And we beat Nashville, but just barely. But Colson getting three assists. So I don't think we've had fewer than three goals in a game since I changed the lines and put everybody put the all the top guys on the first line. Nice. So even though the scoring may be a little unbalanced, it's working. Sometimes that's all you can do. And Devcoat against New Jersey, back to overtime, but we lose this time, 5-4. Still continuing to score goals. And now it's back to back, we're going against Nashville again. I think I will go with Di Pietro in this one. Oh, and Demko cooling off too. And Nashville beats us 6-5. So continuing to score, just the goaltending. That's a problem. So is that now more of a concern for me, finding a decent goalie, than it is than getting that extra scoring up front? I don't think we're not going to make it to the trading deadline tonight, but uh, when we come back in a couple of weeks, we're going to have a tough decision to make there. All the fun. All the fun. Calgary. Oh, Demko very tired. So maybe should have swapped out Myers too. He's getting worn down. And yet another overtime game, but we win this one 4 3. Okay, I might have another trade offer here for you. What's that one? Hold on. I gotta see. You. I'm still advancing it here. We have to raid everybody's favorite team to raid players off of. It is in fact accepted. Okay. We take from Buffalo Dylan Cousins. Okay. And we have to, as well, take the contract of 29-year-old defenseman Ryan Murphy. Uh, Pasternak just resigned with Boston, so he's not going to be a free agent. And we give up Jason Dickinson, that third-round pick again, and the rights to that uh, Still, finished defense. Cousins is only three stars, three and a half potential. Yeah. If I'm going to get a winger, I want somebody that's, that's not really a first-line guy. He's 21 years old, though playing on a bad team. I think he can be that guy. And he's not being paid anything this year. And he's having a bit of a bad the, uh, 2D, uh, the line changing? I think this would be a so good trade. For Jets. I think you're crazy. But it's your call. And, oh, wow, Ryan O'Reilly got paid out by the Blues, so five more years, which will take him to 36. And, yeah, reasonable contract for him, I think. How much was it? And Alex Cotton was five years at, for $37 million total. Alex Cotton, uh, player of the month in the American nice. League, still close to a point a game. Nice. Oh, got to the Bunfield budget again. Leave that as it is still. And then we're going to start and we will play this one. Now let me just change the settings because I was playing around with these testing stuff. Take that back down to normal. 
go okay the uh, new settings are I'm using the I'm gonna leave I'll turn on ice decisions on but the new one is use manual uh, line changes and uh, yeah, the in-game feedback as well but that's a new one use manual line changes you need to have full watch mode on and uh, game stoppage is turned on which makes sense yeah so because you're changing uh, at the face-offs oh did I turn the sound off don't want to deafen everybody yeah it's muted actually what I will do I will play I'll crank the speed back up uh, so you can As we're going to go through the whole warm up here because I turned everything off, it turned everything on into full mode at the start of the uh, game. Just the blank squares, huh? Uh, if only there was a more interesting mod you could have. Well, I certainly wouldn't want anything ridiculous like a bunch of uh, things that look like Muppets, Muppet heads. <laughs> I think in that you just made the argument for why it's awesome, Jeff. It looks like Muppets. Okay, so I will stop that for a sec. And we're going to just note a very fast view speed so I can get to the face-offs quickly. Oh, honest decisions. Uh, I shouldn't have done that with fast view speed. I will. I'm just going to leave the line changes on. And there you go. That's you can see this will look sort of familiar because it's the uh, it looks a bit like the well, it's based on the old interface from the classic engine. But you can see here I've got a face off in the Winnipeg end. And uh, the blue line is the shift fatigue. So you can see the top line looks like they've just been out there down about halfway. But the other two, the other lines are relatively fresh. Actually, I'm surprised it's they're not all the way up. Got to take a look at that, maybe. So the, I'll pick the second line and the second defensive pair as well. Go back out and then just either hit play or space bar, and it will put the next line out for you. So you can see the right guys. Well, jumped ahead quickly there, but Horvat was centering, so that is the second line. Yes. Third line again in the offensive zone, and I can use keyboard shortcuts as well. So I'm hitting whoops. Don't hit the space bar. Oh, I got a goal off the face off. I'll take that. Nice. Players are looking like they're moving crazy fast, though, watching this. Yeah, I know. I've got. Uh, I turned up. No, I know. I know. Few speed. I'm just reinforcing that for somebody who's like skipping through and being like, well, why is everybody moving so fast? Yeah. I can always just take it back down to normal and it'll. Well, like that, and you can see I've got the uh, line change I made. Gets right away, gets the right line out there, and we're getting close to the end time, so I'm just going to zoom in to the rest of that. But you can see how it works. And we get a 5 2 win out of it. Pedersen with the hat trick. Nice. So I'm going to take a very quick look at our stats before we wind this up. And how far are we from the. Trading deadline is off February 24th. It's a little earlier in this. So about three weeks, so we'll get that get to that next time. Pedersen, no, Pedersen's picked it up, having a good season. Garland, Besser, that's the first line. Hoglander continuing to improve. He's nearly at his uh, point total from last year, but calls it. That's coming along nicely. But doubled his production. Uh, Dickinson, who's we mentioned up to three and a half stars pretty good horvat that's kind of disappointing uh, mott has dropped off after that now uh, dropped off considerably we said he was doing so great in that uh we looked at him I looked at him at the start of this game pearson disappointing i wasn't really expecting felino to score but i liked a little bit more than that i think and di pietro and goal those are ugly numbers 893 save percentage uh, Dempo's not a whole lot better, 907. Uh, uh, goaltending is a problem. I'll just advance this to the next day to get us to Colorado. And do you want to wind it up, uh, Adam? Oh, geez, Horvat was minus 20 max. I didn't see that. 
All right. Thank you very much for tuning in to another Franchise Hockey Manager stream. We typically stream every Wednesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv slash Franchise Hockey Manager, as well as twitch.tv slash OOTP Developments. All of our streams are archived on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash OOTP Developments as well. And they go live on Sundays at about 3 a.m. Eastern. So for our European viewers, because, you know, they deserve good content too. Um, you can reach out to us as well on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Franchise Hockey Manager. On Twitter, we're at Franchise Hockey where you can find a link to our official Discord in our Twitter bio. Of course, you can come on down to our official website, which is ootpdevelopments.com. Click on the community button in the top right-hand corner, which will bring you to official forums where you come talk to us about Franchise Hockey Manager, Out of the Park Baseball, Perfect Team, Out of the Park Go, or anything else you wish to discuss. Jeff, did I miss anything? No, I don't think so. And you, that's ugly. And Besser's not much better, minus 15 for him. No. second line was getting killed with them on it. Don't know. Foot not doing very good defensively either. Yeah. That's a little messy. But yeah, we will be back uh, next week uh, with Adam's uh, early 90s Jets game where he's doing a little better than we are at the moment and much better than the actual Jets are doing at that point. So they Ooh. may be able to avoid relocation. So thanks for coming out, yes. everybody. If you haven't picked up the new update, uh, please take a look. And we will be back in a week.